His family-friendly content on YouTube, like children's videos, crafting channels, teen comedy channels, gaming channels, etc., about to go away? Yes, because of YouTube's deal regarding the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. But after explaining why this is happening, I'll let you know some ways that solid marketing practices can not only save family-friendly content on YouTube, but make those content creators stronger than ever. Now, I've spent much of my serious academic life researching not only online privacy, but online privacy for children. And I've honed my marketing skills, learning how to target the right audiences, drive traffic to the right content, build great products, and retain customers for service products that cost more money than most of the cars that people drive. So my expertise in both areas gives me a unique perspective on not only what's going on now with YouTube, but also how strategic marketing can solve the problem. Let's start with this problem. In January 2020, YouTube will forever be changed with respect to how it treats children's content and family-friendly content that is also children-friendly. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, acts as a pseudo-enforcer of a law called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA. COPPA was enacted back in 1998 and went into effect shortly afterwards. Its purpose is to protect the privacy of children who are under 13 years of age. COPPA was revised in 2013, and since that time, it appears that few people were paying attention to what has been happening on YouTube with respect to the rise of children's content and family-friendly content. But then some people complain that even though you're supposed to be 13 or older to have a YouTube account, millions of parents are giving their kids unfettered access to YouTube and thus access to YouTube content. Now, originally, COPPA was focused on preventing the collection and use of personally identifying information from children, which means names and addresses and telephone numbers. But in 2013, in the revision, the government expanded COPPA's definition of personal information to include cookies, which help advertisers get the right ads to the right people. This means that if someone watched a kid's video on YouTube, that same person might be shown a kid-oriented ad, like something from Mattel or Hasbro or Fisher-Price or Lego. Never mind the idea that it could be kids watching the videos on their parents' tablets or a parent watching the video or even a 13-year-old who isn't even covered by the COPPA regulation. Now, YouTube didn't make this concern any less concerning because although it claimed that it did not have users under 13 on its platform, it also boasted to companies like Mattel and Hasbro that it was the leader in providing ads to children ages 6 to 11. Yeah, not such a good idea. As a result, in September 2019, YouTube settled a lawsuit with a promise to pay $170 million in penalties to the FTC and to the New York Attorney General's office. YouTube also agreed to disable comments and notifications and personalized ads on any videos that are deemed to be attractive to children under 13, which is a very, very wide variety of YouTube content. Now, one of the effects of this will be that parents can no longer have an open communication path with family-friendly YouTube content creators through the comments sections. The bigger hit, though, is that the sense of community that those parents built between each other and with the various family-friendly YouTube channels with those brands will be shattered. It's like taking content development and broadcasting from 2020 and moving it back into the 1980s. Another huge consequence will be the massive reduction in YouTube ad revenues for all those content creators that focused on true kid-friendly programming. What will this mean? Some channels will purposely move away from family-friendly and children-friendly content so that they won't lose their brand communities or their ad revenues. They'll add violence or profanity or mature themes and claim that their audience are, and our audiences are not kids, even though many kids have already become brand loyal to those channels. Other content creators will close down their operations and stop producing content because it won't be worthwhile from a financial perspective. Finally, others will continue to produce content, but won't have the same interactions with parents that they once had because of the inability to share comments. In essence, children-friendly 
and family-friendly content on YouTube will begin a sharp decline in both quantity and quality, at least from independent content creators. YouTube itself was prepared for this with its 2015 YouTube Kids app, which was launched as a web-based option on August 30th, 2019, a few days before the settlement with the FTC. Coincidence? So, is there a way for independent content creators to fight back against the situation and keep their brand communities and their open interactions with parents and their revenues? Yes, there is. And as a marketer, I will tell you that the solution is a good dose of strategic marketing. You need to take the following five steps, and you should do this whether you produce kid-friendly content or not. First, for those of you who have been producing quality content for kids and families, please continue to produce that content. Don't let some new rules stop you from doing what you're good at. And while you're producing, focus your efforts on quality content that engages, not just frequent content that casually entertains. Second, drive traffic to owned platforms rather than to borrowed ones. In other words, you need to get people to visit your website. This is crucial because it's at your website that you'll interact with your audiences, build community, and generate revenue. Third, interact responsibly and within the guidelines of COPPA, meaning no interactions with anyone that falls within COPPA age brackets. On your website, embed your YouTube videos. Build discussion boards using Gmail as a sign-in. Write regular blog posts. Compile email lists and send your audience members newsletters with notifications of new videos, driving them to your website to view the embedded YouTube videos. With all this interaction, you'll rebuild community, maintain community, and build additional community. Fourth, offer proprietary content. This might be bonus videos that are only available to newsletter subscribers. It could be educational materials for parents. Whatever works with your audience. Fifth, develop new revenue streams connected to your website. This could be through your new proprietary content, or you could use a platform like Patreon to solicit donations. Maybe you can sell merchandise or training. Be creative and give your audiences what they want. In truth, all content creators on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram should have been doing this for the past five years in anticipation of potential changes in those platforms. But, well, better late than never. Finally, go back to YouTube and find a way to work with the COPPA regulations, in an ethical way, of course. For every child-oriented video that you produce and post, which you'll designate as such with YouTube, create a companion video that is parent-focused and explains how parents can help their children consume your kid content in a responsible manner. These parent videos will serve several purposes. First, because they're not designated as attractive to children, they will have the comments and notifications and targeted advertising that you'll just have lost with the kid videos. Second, while they won't necessarily act as insurance to the FTC, they do show that you care about your various audiences and work to provide content in a responsible manner by working with parents. Taking a strategic marketing approach to the COPPA issue won't just remedy the situation, it will make content creators stronger because they'll be on the path toward creating strong audience communities that will be based on their own websites rather than on YouTube. It all goes to show that when your business experiences a, a challenging situation, a good dose of strategic marketing can go a long way toward not just resolving the situation, but making your business even stronger. I've included links below of several other discussions on COPPA and how it's affecting YouTube. If there are others that I haven't listed that you feel are worthwhile, let me know in the comments and feel free to vent about what's going on and how you think it might be might soon affect YouTube channels that are not only focused on children's or family-friendly content, but focus on other content as well. In the meantime, subscribe for more videos on marketing, branding, social media, analytics, digital, and whatever else comes our way.